Hi folks, Scott Sager with you again today here in the RTC TV studios. We've got another great treat for you as we continue to introduce candidates from the area. We've got a gentleman here. He's running for Cass County Sheriff, Ed Schroeder, in the studio today. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Um, I'm excited to have some folks coming up from Cass County. Uh, of course, we've gone down there with Caston and Pioneer and... Uh, so folks are starting to watch a little bit more RTC TV4, which is great for me. I like to kind of, I just keep adding other communities to my large community, and that's what I love. So uh, Cass County, big county, bigger than Rochester, I've come to find, or bigger than Fulton by quite a bit, I've yes. come to find out. But um, we want to talk to Ed a little bit, find out a little bit about him, his platform, if you will, and uh, let you guys know who he is as you're uh, making your vote there here coming up on November 6th. So... Let's start out. Um, you're from Cass County? Yes, sir. Uh, oh. Born and raised in Royal Center. No kidding. Uh, I've been married almost 24 years okay. to my wife, Kim, who's a, an employee at Pioneer Elementary, is the new guidance uh, counselor at the elementary. She's a second grade teacher Fantastic. for quite a while. I uh, have three boys. Okay. Uh, Ethan, who is, uh, just turned 21, is an 82nd Airborne, graduated from Pioneer. Wow. Uh, middle son, Garrett, who is uh, just graduated last year and was the... Uh, on the Pioneer State Championship football team, I was the Blake uh, Rest Mental Attitude Award winner at the, did. Uh, at the championship no game. No kidding. Proud moment for us as parents. And then, Mental uh, attitude, that's great. Then I have uh, the youngest son, Keaton, who is a junior on the Pioneer football wow. team. And uh, he, all three boys have worn number 63. Oh, uh, no kidding. Was that dad's number? No, I did oh. not play football. Okay. So Pi okay. football was new at Pioneer, and I, I didn't play. I so. understand. So the kids all had 63 as they played, though. Yes. That's yes. neat. They, they passed along, and uh, matter of fact... Uh, the youngest son wears the same under shirt that the oldest son wore in the uh, in the game. So why not? You've had such a good winning streak down there. You need to keep that superstition yes. going, right? Yes, it's yes. that shirt that's making the difference. Yes, this yes. Year. it's smelly and it stands in the corner, but it's good. Amen. Yes. As a, as a yes. guy who got to play on the '87 team here in Rochester, down in the yes. Hoosier Dome, I'll tell you that uh, superstition comes very much into play. Yes, yes it does. So uh, very good. So you've got uh, family roots there in Royal Center. You've got family there now. Um, talk to us about law enforcement. Are you in law enforcement? I, I don't am. know you. So currently, uh, I'm currently a, a major with the Indiana State Police. Okay. I'm one of two zone majors in the state. I have everything north of Indianapolis. I'm a, I'm a zone major, and wow. I supervise about 350 uh, people, police and civilians. No kidding. Have six posts, and uh, it's a uh, full time job by oh itself. Oh my gosh! I, I had no idea. I uh, started. Uh, my career at the Cass County Sheriff's Department. I was, uh, my parents had a service station in Royal Center and I worked there growing up and the, the sheriff at the time uh, stopped in and said, hey, I, we, we need some part-time help. <laughs> and uh, while I was in college at DePaul University where I graduated, uh, my intent was to study something in the medical field. Okay. And actually I had started graduate school at IU and uh, while I was in college, uh, the sheriff stopped and asked for some part-time help and I, I took that job and that some people say it derailed uh, my career choice, but it actually changed. Uh, and I went from the medical field to uh, policing. Yeah. And uh, when I graduated from DePaul, I went to uh, right into state police recruit school. No kidding. In uh, 1987, and I've been a trooper almost 31 years and worked uh, every rank from uh, trooper to corporal to sergeant to first sergeant to lieutenant to captain and a major. So Fantastic. I knew I was talking about the boys in brown, but we're talking about the boys in blue here. Thank yes, you for your yes. service. That's fantastic. I had no idea. So uh, you... you What's that day entail now for you? Just to dig into that for a second, uh, being that you're you've got a zone and you're in charge of that many people, you're not pulling people over and writing tickets no, on sir. a daily basis. No, I'm I'm an administrator. Okay. Uh, my my most of my job is in an office behind a desk. Yeah. But the other portion of that is traveling. I, I travel all over the northern part of the state to the different posts, gotcha. different meetings, uh, critical incidents. Uh, I also go to Indianapolis for planning meetings. Nice. Uh, I'm I actually work. With closely with the superintendent, uh, you know the superintendent is the is kind of the the CEO of the state police, right. and he's like the sheriff locally or superintendent of a school yep. corporation. But I, I'm president not, of a company. Yes, if you will. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, the South Zone Major and I are part of what is called his major subordinate commands. There are five. There's okay. the South Zone, the North Zone, uh, commercial vehicle enforcement, uh, special operations, and then. Um, the fifth one has escaped me. That's okay. Uh, but there are five. Okay. So there are five majors, and we uh, we do that, and, and we have fantastic. planning meetings, and we're involved in strategic planning and long-range planning and then uh, problem solving. Yeah. So a lot of my job is kind of being a uh, 
being a fireman, if you yeah, will, uh, to a solving degree, problems and personnel that. issues, mm-hmm. and then situations around around uh, my area of uh, operating. Yeah. Area. So. So uh, you're looking at coming down from the state ranks into the sheriff's position there in Cass County. It's quite a career move, a change. Yes. What's inspired that? Well. Uh, it, it, that, that's a great question. I get a lot as I'm out meeting the citizens. And uh, it's one of those, my career started at the Sheriff's Department, and that really directed me. But yeah. as, as the, the major in the state police for the northern part of the state, uh, I, my, my heart is in Cass County. Yeah. I'm the fire chief in Royal Center. <laughs> I'm on the 911 advisory board. I'm on the EMA uh, oh, governing board. I'm on goodness. the LEPC. I'm a 4-H leader and instructor. Holy cow. Uh, before I came here today, I was helping paint the football field. I'm one of the dads who does that. So I'm involved in all those things, yeah. plus whatever my family is. Yeah. And uh, it, it, I don't really don't get to go home for lunch. Yeah. I'd like to bring all that knowledge and experience and training I've received mm-hmm. back home. That's fantastic. And it, it's... it's some people don't understand, and I don't look at it as, and, and I know you didn't mean it that way, as coming down, but I look at it as a lateral mm-hmm. moving, going from this large area and all this mm-hmm. this focus down to my home county mm-hmm. and bring, bring my, my knowledge, relationships with yeah. the state, local, and federal Just partners. Just a little more down. granular is what I meant, yes. rather than the, the wide scope of the northern part of the state being granular in the county as far as bringing yes. it down. I like to call that as going uh, from the cosmopolitan view kind of down that parochial view, yeah. where you're looking at taking all that knowledge and focusing that energy in one specific area. And now that's done through people. And, and one of the things I like to say is that you know, the police of the community and the community of the police. And, yeah. and I, I functioned that way through uh, through my career with the state police. I spent two years as a supervisor in our newly formed community policing okay. squad. Uh, and then I, I've gotten to involved with a lot of major incidents. Yeah. And being a CEO of a police agency is not like being a road officer or you know, one of those other, it's, you're a CEO, mm-hmm. you are a strategic planner, a long yep. range thinker, you're a big picture kind of person. Right. And, and I believe it's, I believe it can be done, but I mm-hmm. think I'm bringing the tools to the table to make that a little bit more efficient and effective for the citizens of Cass County. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. We talk about that here at RTC even, um, you know, I, I manage the department, I manage ATV stations now, this isn't about me, but right. I fly at 30,000 feet, but at any given moment, I have to have the knowledge to go down into the trenches, get very granular with it, and help solve a technical issue right. or a production issue. Um, and so to have those skills is very important to bring forward. Yes. Whether you use them every day or whether right. you just need them in that moment, they're right. great to have. I, I talked to a group uh, not too long ago, and they asked me about working the road. If I if I won the race, would I go out and work, work a shift? And I said, absolutely. Your job is to fill in. Sure. A, a, a leadership model is when you see a void, you fill it. Yeah. And that is one of those things you have to do. But that's not a job that I'm running for. I'm running to be sheriff. And, yeah. And as you do that, you learn that knowledge base. And uh, I think I bring that to the table. And one of the couple of things that I, I've really had over my career with the state police is, you know, I'm a certified incident commander for Homeland Security. Wow. I, I went to the uh, Republican National Convention in Cleveland with our, with our uh, what we call tactical uh, intervention platoon, a riot squad for, for safety, and I was one of the commanders there. Really? I responded to Hurricane Katrina, you know, uh, as, a, as an area captain, I, I responded to hundreds of critical incidents yeah. where area captain is, you are the incident commander. So you control the tactical decisions in the SWAT team. You control the negotiations. You control yeah. the perimeter, the, the liaison with the other agencies. Yeah. So I bring that knowledge and experience. Uh, I want to bring that back to uh, Cass County residents and where I sure. live. And, and there's a knowledge base that I, the school of hard knocks, if you will, yeah. that, that I brought in. Besides having that practical knowledge, I, I've attended the FBI National Academy, which only 1% of police officers can attend. It's, a, it's wow. an in-house leadership school in Quantico that I actually took graduate courses while I was there through, uh, through a local university. That's and amazing. and you, you network with police officers yeah. from around the world. Uh, I've been to Northwestern University School sta- uh, Northwestern University School of Police Staff and Command, which is a ten-week intensive, collegiate-based management school, talking about uh, budgeting and shifts and manpower and human resources and all those things you would get in a management position. Yeah. So, not only do I believe I have the 
technical expertise from mm-hmm. education, but also the practical skill that I've made some of those mistakes. As you know, as a as a manager, as you become a new manager, you, you make those sure. and you learn as you move along. Yeah. And I've been a police supervisor now for almost 25 years. Wow. So a majority of my career, I've been in some type of leadership role within the state police. So. That's fantastic. Well, you know, you are bringing, um, to the candidacy anyways, you are bringing um, your own set of, of you, your own network, if yes. you will. Um, yes. There's an existing brotherhood and network, of course, of emergency management around the state. Of course, um, interagency cooperation is imperative in, yes. in your line of work. But um, you're bringing a lot to the table yourself. That's fantastic. Yes. For a guy who uh, started out for medical and uh, ended up with a somewhat distinguished, if I, if you let me allow me to say that, uh, career in criminal justice, I would say you didn't go off rail. You just switched tracks, and just, that's just fantastic. a different focus, but the same. Absolutely. As I've often told people, public safety has been a way of life for me, yeah. and I didn't just didn't start these activities deciding I was going to run for sheriff. Mm-hmm. That's the way my family and I have mm-hmm. always operated. We're we're engaged in in activities, you know, in, in different clubs and helping people out, and and it's uh, it's a rewarding thing. And and it's you're not in it as a lucrative position. You're right. not going to get rich. You you're you're here to serve mankind and be yeah. a servant leader and and provide that service to people. And that's yeah. that's what I'd like to extend and focus that energy on on my home area yeah no stranger to service and by any means um it's running through your veins so i appreciate that as i've told all the candidates here um you know i'm on tv every day but one of the last things you'll ever see me do in this life is throw my hat into the political (laughs) ring it's just it's a dog eat dog world and i have a lot of respect for the folks who not only want to serve but want to serve enough to go through an election cycle (laughs) yes it's it's been a lot of work it's been challenging Affects your family, your personal life. Yes. I mean, you put things on hold for a while to do yes. these things. Yes. I, uh, when I was a road trooper, I actually worked uh, Cass County, where I'm running for sheriff. Okay. And, and I've met people now that, uh, you know, typically as a police officer, you think that you meet a lot of people, but a lot of times you meet them at their worst. Mm. Or you meet the people that are having issues, and yeah. that's who you deal with. Yeah. And and I've met some wonderful people that I had never run across before in my great. career in all these other activities. Yeah, so, got some good people. So in I, it's been some great people. I've had fun, and uh, you, you kind of build a little bit of camaraderie with some of the other yeah. candidates, no matter what job they're in sure. for, because you travel in the same circles yep. and go and, to the and same rotary meetings. Absolutely, yep. yes, absolutely. It's interesting. It's been fun, and and uh, I know it's going to be a lot of work, but it's been more work than you could have ever guessed. And my hats off, just like you said, to anybody who's thrown their name yeah. in the ring, because it is. It, it is doggy eat dog, and, <laughs> but it, it can be challenging and yeah. fun and and, uh, and exciting all at the same time. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're just a short time away from the, the general election, and yep. uh, everybody I know is working hard to win the uh, the brass ring or the prize mm-hmm. at the end, and mm-hmm. it's uh, it, hopefully it pays off. And uh, again, these are all people that are going to end up serving you. Um, your fervor to do this is great. As a yes. as as a voter, you know you want to be you want to have all of your candidates and every candidate I've had in on the couch uh, this year. You see that passion in their eyes, and so um, you know again a, a heartfelt thank you to all of you out there. Well, Ed, it's a pleasure to have met you, and thank uh, you. I thank you for your service. Uh, state trooper here, tell them your rank again. Uh, I'm a North Zone major. I'm okay. one of two zone majors in the state, Excellent. and. Uh, I'd like to uh, be the next Cass County Sheriff to focus on uh, several of the issues that I believe that uh, are in our area and, and improve the quality of life and yeah. uh, and be able to bring some uh, dedicated work to the citizens of Cass County. Excellent. Perfect. Perfect. Well, anything else you want to talk to the viewers about? Uh, I'd just like to talk a couple minutes about uh, the platform. I, I'm, yeah. A big thing for me is in technology improvement. Okay. Uh, I think that's, that's important. I talk community policing, and, and I believe one of Sir Robert Peel's tenets is okay. that the police are the community, and the community are the police, and yeah. the police can't do it alone. Yeah. And We and, are you, you are us. Absolutely Let's right. not fight. Yes. We're together yes. on this. Okay. You know, there are certain things that police officers take an oath to do that, mm-hmm. that get are a little different than normal citizens. Sure. but the eyes and ears of the citizens and be able to interact with them and provide and build those relationships or what make an effective police agency, whether it's state police, sheriff's department, local police, yeah. that, that you have to do those. So I think there's some technology moves we can make to uh, free up some time and, yeah, and automate get, some things, automate, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And get our, get our officers and deputies more engaged in the community. Perfect. Uh, anywhere you go, everybody wants to talk about opioids and, yeah. and I've really, really tried to, Focus that to not just opioids, but to narcotics okay. in general, because opioids are out there and, and they're major issues. But 
methamphetamine still king. Yep. You know, that's the number one submission to the laboratory for analysis. Uh, there's cocaine, you know, all these other drugs still there. that we have to, they're still there that lead to property crimes and mm -hmm. personal injury crimes mm -hmm. because there, there's a force moving people to commit those crimes. Yeah. A lot of times it's about money and, and, and uh, getting getting money to buy drugs or to pay somebody off it's a or do a terrible those cycle horrible and we, we have to break that cycle yep. and you know and and what i want to do is set goals meet those goals and achieve those goals when the ac and, and will we ever eradicate narcotics absolutely not there's such a demand but we can reduce the the, the demand mm -hmm. we can educate our people mm -hmm. We can provide services for our, our inmates mm -hmm. in, in the jail because the, I believe that the jail is probably the largest single mental health facility in every county. I would agree. And you have addiction issues. You have mental health issues. You have uh, social issues. Mm -hmm. and, and, think, and it's completely, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. It's completely underfunded. And it's, it, first of all, the, the mental health issues in our, inside of our jails and prisons um, didn't want to be acknowledged for a long time. And Correct. once we acknowledge them, that's right. a good thing. But we're talking, it would cost millions and millions and millions yes. of dollars to do the full service that, we, that yes. we would want to do. And the money simply isn't there. Correct. So you have to work under certain limitations. Right. I, I think there are things we can do with public-private partnerships. Okay. I think there are nonprofit groups that you can leverage money. Great. There are programs that exist within the jails. You, you can do things. And, and to, to help the uh, inmates, offenders, whatever you want to call them, they're all our family members. Yes. There are people, yes. there are neighbors that we live there. So yes. they, maybe they maybe they, maybe they they are innocent. There are people waiting trial, right. and there are people who just need help. And, and I, I think to help those, we have to, I call it the three-legged stool. Mm -hmm. You have to provide them uh, mental health services. Mm -hmm. You have to provide them physical, which is, you know, the health issues, mm -hmm. and you have to provide them spiritual. Mm -hmm. And all three of those together work in concert to provide Absolutely. a leg up. And, and, you know, you talk about the cost of programs, but we're talking about human lives. I, and yep. there is, it's hard to put, you know, I want to be a fiscal person, responsibly person with budgets, but, yep. you know, if you can save one person mm -hmm. or one life, mm -hmm. then how do you put a price tag on That's that? That's right. And, and as you said, it's not just the sheriff's department, it's interagency, it's the social services of Cass County, working yes. with the sheriff's department, working with the city, working with the county. It's everybody together. And I think that what moves my heart is that I've seen more of that over the past, I would say, three years of communities really coalescing to help solve these problems. Yes. Um, your, your job is to stop the immediate. Yes. And then to help facilitate them to the next step. Correct. Um, you know, if there's a guy on the street with a gun, you got to get the guy on the street. Right. You know, yeah. and then right. we can work with the, what's behind that. Yes. But, but I've heard law enforcement officers um, and candidates talking right. about the fact that they realize that these are people, that their job is to solve the immediate, but to help um, get them out of the cycle, break the cycle, as we say. Yes and get them back to a point where they're contributing members of society. Yes. So yeah. I appreciate that. You know, the, the, the old adage is you can't arrest your way out of a problem. And I, and agree, with, I agree with that 100%. But that is a tool Interesting. to help. Sometimes uh, when someone's arrested, that forces them into these programs. Mm -hmm. They may not have done that beforehand unless right. the court for, enforced yeah. that. So, you know, I, I don't think you can arrest your way out of it, but I think arrest is a tool that we can use. And sure. there are all kinds of early release programs being looked at and early, early juvenile releases. Mm -hmm. And there are things in the works all over the state and nation to help solve the jail overcrowding issues as well as the narcotics sure. issues. And it really takes someone with a vision to come in and leverage those, put them together and, and, and make what happens. Because there's not, there's not a book on the shelf that you can put right. and say, this is the program I'm going to follow and here's how we're going to do it. A lot of it's trial and error and there are some things that are free, but you know, as a sheriff or even as my job with the state police or as mm -hmm. a fire chief, mm -hmm. you have to live within the constraints of the budget yep. you're given by the government agencies that provide you that money. And, yep. and you have to have to really figure out and manage that to yeah. get the most bang for the buck, you, if you will. You better believe we want you to be a good steward of that. And uh, I, I have yet to meet a department head in government that has more than enough money. <laughs> Absolutely right. And, and people who know me know that I, I like the term that I'm very frugal. So yes. it's, uh, that's, yeah. that's a trait that, I, that will carry through because yeah. that's that's the way I handle my finances, the the fire department finances right. and the bud, other budgeting things. So it's it's one of those that realizing that there's not a bucket of gold at the end of the rainbow right. and, and that's that's Can sometimes difficult. so much yes. yeah yeah and that's the tough thing but it sounds like you've got a lot of the skills to bring forward to help you through those so i think that's so fantastic i think so i think it's uh it's up to the voters uh 
you really have they really have to decide. They're going to yeah. have to look at the experience and knowledge and select the best candidate. I believe that I'm that candidate. That's why I'm in the that's why I'm in the game. And yeah. it's uh, I think it's important. But uh, at the end of the day, you never know until the election t- tallies <laughs> right. are in that's how it's right. going to turn yeah. out. That's got to be a nerve wracking yes. day. Uh, we do live coverage for all of those uh, here in Fulton County with our partners over at WROI. And uh, you see the looks on the candidates' faces as they're waiting for the tallies. Yes. So, uh, again, just a heartfelt thanks to all the candidates. Ed Schroeder running for Cass County Sheriff on the Republican ticket. That's correct, sir. And, uh, you know, I, I just, again, thank you. And uh, I thank you for being a part of the process and yes. uh, for your service as a state trooper. Thank and you. as fire chief of Royal Center, you probably... He was painting lines earlier today on the Pioneer football field, folks. That's one of the things I like about um, RTC being a small community-based television is yes. that, um, you know, the principal's up there cutting the grass at Culver High School the other day, yes. and we've got their firefighter doing other things. It's it's great stuff. It's community at its best. Yes. I appreciate it. I wish you the best of luck in this Thank election. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Uh, my pleasure. Appreciate folks, it. thank you for watching. We'll have more of these interviews right here on RTC TV4.